Does the underrepresentation of women in technology roles hamper the industry's effectiveness? Join me and my guest, Christina Balaam from Lookout, as we explore this critical topic on this episode of Between Two Servers. Welcome to Between Two Servers, the video series designed specifically for IT leaders. I'm Don Pezet, and we know your time is valuable and in short supply, so let's get right to it with my guest today, Christina Balaam. Christina is a senior security intelligence engineer at Lookout, a leader in delivering integrated endpoint to cloud security. By day, Christina is a mobile malware mastermind working to safeguard Android applications. However, she's also passionate about solving the glaring diversity problem in the tech industry. Welcome, Christina. My first question today is centering around when women are entering into the cybersecurity workforce. Are there any specific challenges that they face when applying for an entry level position? Um, that's a really great question. And, you know, I think applying for an entry level position is something that anybody entering a new industry struggles with. But for women in particular, sometimes the listings are structured in a way that that rely really heavily on prior experience. And, you know, something might specify three years of experience in a role that somebody is just getting into just new to the industry. And we've seen in a number of studies, including one from Hewlett Packard, that women are only likely to apply for a role if they meet 100% of the expectations and the requirements that are set by it. Uh, men tend to apply if they meet around 60. And, and so that just sort of narrows the pipeline. If you have fewer women applying for roles, um, it just makes it harder for you know people to get through the door if they're not actually applying in the first place. And then on top of that, another study, um, this time from McKinsey, actually found that when it comes to hiring for a lot of these positions, they're finding that hiring managers are focusing very heavily on um, potential when they're hiring men they're, they're you know they're hiring somebody seeing what they could possibly do in the future and for women it, it tends to be more focused on their prior experience and their track record and when you're coming from an industry that is completely separate to cybersecurity, it's hard to really have that track record and that experience um, to help bolster you know the the biases that somebody hiring you might have well, you know, I, I, I approach that from the angle of just getting started in cybersecurity, so an entry level position, but now I'm kind of curious, d does that same thing apply to people that are already in the industry? So for example, uh, w women advancing up into the hierarchy, moving into management positions, does, does all that apply there as well? I think it does, yeah. I, I think especially for looking at some of those more senior positions, um, and then we're, we're also sort of seeing a lot of other issues in terms of retaining women in the industry once we're already here. So. Um, you know, there there have been some other studies done, a really wonderful presentation by Ashley Holtz a few years back. She's a security engineer and she did a talk at Black Hat on retaining women in cybersecurity. And her, her talk spoke to the fact that actually 56% of women are leaving technical roles in cybersecurity right at the midpoint of their careers. And, you know, when you're leaving, when you're seeing this mass exodus of women right around that time, it's really hard to then have those women moving into upper level management and more senior positions. And a lot of this is happening just because of issues with feelings of inequality, especially, um, you know, work-life balance. If, if people are moving toward parental leave in some ways, um, there just tends to be some discrepancy there still in the industry that's disproportionately affecting women at that point in their careers. Now, I think most people acknowledge that it, you know, it, it is just fair and just to make sure that we have a diverse workforce and that as we hire people, we we gauge them on the merits of their people that we, we don't necessarily discriminate based on any characteristics. But for some organizations, they approach diversity of hiring just from an angle of like they're being forced to do it from a marketing perspective or whatever. But there are some tangible benefits from having a more diverse workforce, aren't there? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. And I think we've seen this with every industry and cybersecurity really doesn't differ too much. I mean, when we look at some historical data from the autom automotive industry, especially around uh, safety measures and studies, to this day, women and children are still disproportionately affected by car accidents because, you know, dating back to the first crash test dummies and a lot of the studies that were done on automotive safety, the stats they were using, the the specifications they were using were actually for the average male body. And so that's still affecting us now. So when you have an industry, any industry, but especially one that's moving so quickly, like cybersecurity and you know computer security in general, um, if you have diverse perspectives, you're going to get better solutions to problems. 
All right, now our, our workplace environments are in a really unusual place right now. We have a few different things going on. Uh, obviously with the pandemic, a lot of people have shifted to work from home. Uh, we're undergoing the great resignation right now. People are, are leaving companies and, and they've worked for for many years and moving to new positions, taking new opportunities. So it's, it's exciting, but it's kind of risky all at the same time. Uh, how do you feel that that's affected women in, you know, we're focused on cybersecurity, but really it's IT in general. Uh, I felt like we were making a lot of progress up until the pandemic and then everything kind of went off the rails. So what, how would you say it is now? Has it gotten better, worse? Are we still in the same boat? That's a really good point. So from, and this is just my perspective from what I've seen with talking to women in the industry, um, we are actually seeing that mass exodus again, kind of like around that midpoint of, of a lot of women's careers. And I think that ties into kind of the, the global issue we're seeing that women have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic and the need to kind of step away from their careers for childcare, you know, when kids are out of school during lockdown and, and all of that. Um, and so that's that's been a big issue, I think, especially especially for women in, in roles like in cybersecurity, where sometimes um, work life balance can be a little bit trickier because, you know, there are on call periods, uh, especially, you know, in the midst of the pandemic, when it seems like the number of cyber attacks has increased exponentially. All right. Now, there are a lot of people that are out there talking about this issue. Awareness is, is at a higher level than it's ever been before. So that's that's all very good. But a lot of the talks, they don't really give us like an action item to take away, something that we, we should do. So if if you were talking to a CISO or some cybersecurity leadership and you wanted to give them one action item, like the most important thing, what, what is something we can do to better address this issue? So my advice would be to be open to training on the job. And this is something that you know, it doesn't just affect women. Um, it's it's really being able to to fix the pipeline problem that we have just in cybersecurity in general. Uh, a lot of these listings, as I talked about before, you know, are looking at an entry level position with three or four years experience, and in an area like this that's still quite new, that you know, academia hasn't really caught up in terms of the curriculum that's being offered to teach a lot of the kind of fundamentals of cybersecurity offering on the job training to somebody who has other skills that you value and who is keen to actually grow and to develop as a professional here um, is, in, is incredibly valuable to the organization. And there are a lot of other skills, things like project management and, and just leadership in general that really do apply even when you don't necessarily have cybersecurity in your, in your background. All right, well, thank you so much, Christina, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It was great talking to you. Sadly, that's all the time we have for this episode. You can find out more details about Christina and myself in the YouTube description or in the LinkedIn post. So be sure to check that out. Until next time, I'm Don Pazette, and this was Between Two Servers. Mm -hmm.